push microphone. Before we commence this special meeting, we will be having a presentation by Janet Rogers, Port Laureate of the City of Victoria. Ms. Rogers, thank you and, and welcome, as always. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to read a poem for this auspicious uh, occasion. Um, I wanted to uh, name the poem No Pressure because when, <laughs> when, I, when I thought about the weight of the occasion, um, and all that it means to everybody. I thought, oh, no pressure. Um, and then, of course, I had a difficult time finding a rhyme for sesquicentennial. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I named it Laquaman Land. The city is a midden with layers of collective truths ascending from 150 feet deep. We are the fingertips on the far left arm touching the liquid connector, holding the larger land mass together. Laquaman Land where woven blankets are laid across graves as a way to say we honor those who sleep beneath us. Their song of welcome, victory, and journey resonate faintly on ancient beaches. It reaches our hearts. The mayor says, Victoria tries so hard to be cool. It's true, but cool on our own terms. We've never borrowed from big sister van city, glossy steel and glass style. Those shiny outfits would never fit us. Never had need to copy our southern cousin Seattle. Our shore is still accessible, whatever the consequence. Victoria, I like to think, was born to handsome parents and abandoned a while, surviving a few seasons, independent, living a little, learning a few things, an orphan adopting other orphans until finally the family you wish for is formed. Surely the best definition of the city sits outside the confines of 150. Incorporation is a marriage reciting vows and business language between territory and people. And you can't marry the bride without proposing to the whole of her clan, without honoring, well at least recognizing the relationships and all their delicate dynamics before congratulations are sent. We've played the defensive for more than a century, shaping and naming the babies by what we are not. Let's be more than the country's superficial identity of hockey, beer, and coffee brewed by you know who. We are standing on bones. We drink from oceans, ill-named and renamed, yet it all stays the same. 1862, when it became paper legal, a place existing on a map, the map tucked away as a file, finding a soul as a city breathing life into the union by human means. Sculptural landmarks put in place, trace values create one more layer of cultural excavation within the city atop the Kwangin land. Poetry and legalese coexisting on home and native land, the city, the mystery, carries questions, digging in history for answers to bring forward. It is difficult to mark the years as infant, then adolescent, not knowing the exact lifespan of a city still growing, not knowing the beginning before the naming and claiming in Her Majesty's honor. Celebration by incorporation, connecting borders, crossing people's homelands. Important councils debate beauty, import labor, deliberate culture, ruminate history. And as her children, we learn never to judge the worth by one's outer beauty, although we know we are gorgeous and would never qualify any pageant due to exceeding the aesthetic. Our greatest asset is memory, the ships, the battle, the blankets, the blood, the people, the, that painter woman, her house, hotels replacing big houses. Allow me to step outside the timelessness of this tribute to put the queen on Google map, where her scepter extends out like spokes on a bike towards Esquimalt, Royal Oak, Saanich v. Royal, and others. She holds them up, sending citizens out from center, inhabiting pockets of a city still in population. Follow her roads and we find people, not contracts, land, not real estate, culture, not tourism. We review archival evidence to before and after value systems shifting, replacing simple simplicity. The silent skeletons are finally having their say. Victoria, city of gardens, with seeds blown in from every direction, taking root among the indigenous, resulting in rich varieties and cross-pollinations. The plump, happy-faced poppies, delicate, shy pansies, Brother, sister seeds that grow despite the odds from cement cracks thriving on thimbles of water holding ground in bully gusts. The questions 
get harder. Do we vote for more lenient building bans or take the keys to the city from around our necks to open doors leading to highways and faster transit? What about that mainland bridge? That remains a dream for the time being. Future governments can visit that museum of possibilities. In this place, there is no need to abuse the word miracle, misunderstand or exploit it. The constant sparkle upon the water and salmon sunsets define it. However, her mysteries remain thick, and those who protect her beauty secrets work harder with less. The salt-cleansed air blesses us daily as well as the fog and constant June clouds. Here, the light is too bright to be colorblind. Why ignore the rainbow growing and changing in shades like aurora borealis, pushing one color forward, pulling another back, constantly transforming, never stagnating, but celebrating change? Today, this occasion may be too inadequate to hold up the whole of history in one place, but sufficient enough to make a marker in time to witness what no living human today can say they've experienced from the start. In human years, 150 is a long time. In human years, 150 is a blip. So we take our place as collective witness to tell the next generation that 150 is both long and short. For one day, when we are forced from here, shaken or flooded or sunken back home, Lekwungen land will sigh and say, take your stuff and things, leave me with my simple beauty, the same beauty that lured you here in the first place. The first place, Lekwungen land. Thank you, Janet. As always, you bring honor to your office. Thank you. It is my great pleasure to be able to call this special meeting of Thursday, August 2nd, 2012, to order. I need council approval of the agenda. Your Worship, I would move appro approval of the agenda. Second, your please. I would be honored to second it, Your Worship. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have all of you, special guests in front of you. It is in my great pleasure to, to highlight some of the special guests that we have here today. First of all, we have, and we are graced with, his Honor Stephen Point, the Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. We have Chief Andy Thomas, representing the Esquimalt Nation, as well as Mary Ann Thomas, Elder of the Esquimalt Nation. Her Worship, Barbara Anat, Mayor of Napier, New Zealand, and her delegation. Chairman Ozo Morata, of Morioka, Japan, and his delegation. Denise Savoy, Member of Parliament, British Columbia, although we still remember her as Councillor. Uh, the Honorable Ida Chong, Minister of Community, Sport, and Cultural Development. Minister. Uh, Rob Fleming, MLA for Victoria Swan Lake. Also, welcome, Councillor. His Worship, Frank Leonard, Mayor Sandage. His Worship, Nils Jensen, Mayor of Oak Bay. And Her Worship, Barbara Desjardins, Mayor of Esquimalt. His Worship, Larry Cross, Mayor of Sydney. His Worship, John Rands, Mayor of Minchosen. Her Worship, Alice Finnell, Mayor of North Saanich. Her Worship, Jane Mendham, Mayor of Highlands. Hideki Ito, Consul General of Japan. Rupert Potter, Consul General of Britain. Thank you and welcome all to our very special guests today. Today is a day when we recognize and commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Corporation of the City of Victoria. This is a remarkable milestone, and we are honored to have so many of you here to share it with us. All of you here has, in your way, made your mark on this city. And while the council sitting in this chambers today are the current custodians of this community, today we also have the opportunity to honor and acknowledge so many of you who have come before us, whether elected officials, staff, community leaders, you are those who have led us along the way to becoming a better society. Those who have helped shape and define our identity as a city. That includes the culture of communities who have so deeply influenced the growth of this Victoria. 
and our international Twin City relationships. And of course, those who came long before the incorporation of the city of Victoria, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations, whose on traditional territories we sit and who have called this land home for thousands of years. Their stories have shaped our stories, and the two cannot be unwoven. In fact, it is my sincere hope that the future will bring an even more tight-laced you know, partnership that will reflect on the history of the city it is an important exercise. We need to acknowledge our achievements, accounting for our mistakes, and recommitting to a future fueled by respect, integrity, and a mutual love for the city we all call home. There are so many histories that make up the record of this city, all unique in their own right, all equally important. So today, we reflect upon our proud history, but also take this opportunity to celebrate our bright future. I think that I speak for all of Council and all Council's past that it is a deep honour to serve this community and to have the opportunity to put the mind and energy into making this city better for all residents and most especially for future generations who will inherit this beautiful place. We take this responsibility very seriously. Our stewardship must encompass the social, the environmental and the fiscal well-being of this community. We are a community of people who care and who are committed to working together to realize great things. Our future is bright indeed. I thank you all for coming and for the role each person in this room has played. In fact, each person in this community who has played in the formation and growth and vitality of the City of Victoria. The last 150 years has been a team effort. And we must look ahead to the next 150 years, and we must embrace broad partnerships, open communications, and a commitment to the sustainability of our community. Welcome all, and thank you for being part of this. We now take the opportunity to receive presentations, and we shall begin with um, Mr. Willard, if you would do the honor. Your Worship, we have Reverend Dr. Alan Saunders, First Metropolitan United Church, which was incorporated in 1862. Dr. Saunders, welcome. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, leaders and members of the Coast Salish peoples on whose traditional lands we reside. Your Worship, your Worships, members of Council, all who serve us through the municipal, provincial, and federal governments, our international guests, and all honored guests here today. Aishka. Greetings. Ohio gazaimas. As a member of a faith community that is marking its 150th anniversary, a community that seeks to be meaningfully engaged in the life of this city, uh, I am honored to be asked to offer a blessing for this festive occasion. And therefore, I invite you to receive this blessing. May the people of Victoria be blessed with a spirit of gratitude. Gratitude for the wonder of this location, for land, sea, and sky, whose beauty and provision predate all history and speak of things eternal. Gratitude to the Songhees and Esquimalt nations upon whose traditional territories we reside. Gratitude to those who over the past 150 years have given shape and direction for this city. Gratitude for a city of gardens full of natural beauty an urban community rich in history and culture, music and the arts, commercial ventures and sporting activities, education and science, healthcare and civil service. Gratitude for the diversity of cultures in our midst, enriching the fabric of the life we share. And may the people of Victoria be blessed not only with gratitude, 
but with the gift of dreams. The dream of the day when homelessness is no more, addiction is eradicated, mental illness is addressed. <clears throat> to dream of a day when the relationship between First Nations and non-Aboriginal people will be fully healed and restored. To dream of that day when the quality of our lives will be determined not by our bank accounts, but by the wealth of goodwill amongst us and the well-being of the planet. Let the people of Victoria rejoice in these 150th celebrations and may these two gifts, gratitude and dreams, reside deep within us all. Amen. Your Worship, I present Ms. Kim Harrop, President, Victoria Civic Heritage Trust, will present to the Council a book entitled, Test of Time, The Enduring Legacy of Victoria City Hall. Welcome. Thank you. Your Worship, please accept the gift of this book on the occasion of the City of Victoria's 150th anniversary, Test of Time, The Enduring Legacy of Victoria City Hall, on behalf of the Victoria Civic Heritage Trust. Significantly, today is the city's 150th birthday, and it is the public launch of the first book ever written about the history of the city of Victoria City Hall. This very important book will provide a permanent legacy of the city's 150th anniversary of incorporation. The book tells the remarkable story of Victoria City Hall. From the early beginnings of Victoria, the city's inadequate temporary rental locations before the South Wing was constructed as a purpose-built city hall in 1878, through to the eventual completion in 1891 of the historic city hall and Mickleville Park Tower as we know it today. Victoria City Hall was later revisited in the 1960s with the visionary project Centennial Square, announced exactly 50 years ago today, which was the first example of heritage preservation combined with the new development. It was the City Hall that policies involved, which resulted in the City of Victoria gaining an international reputation for its built heritage. The Victoria City Hall complex is now the center and heart of the city and the cornerstone of the downtown heritage preservation as the oldest functioning City Hall in Western Canada. This project was made possible by the hard work of many people and through funding of the building communities through arts and heritage program, Federal Department of Canadian Heritage and Victoria Civic Heritage Trust with the support of the Greater Victoria Spirit Committee in partnership with the City of Victoria. Your Worship, please accept this first copy of the book, of the book with our most enthusiastic congratulations to the City of Victoria on this historic day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> This is a wonderful historic document, an accounting of Victoria City Hall. We would like to uh, please accept a most sincere uh, appreciation for the work that you have done, and, uh, and thank you to the trust that you put in the legacy of this book. Thank you so very much. Mr. Woodland? Your Worship, next we have a number of distinguished guests who wish to request to address Council. The first request today is from His Excellency the Right Honourable David Johnston, Governor General of Canada, who has provided a written address which I will read for the record. Home is a loving family. Home is a vibrant neighbourhood. Home is steeped in history while serving as a special place for Canadians today. For 150 years, the City of Victoria has been proudly called home by its residents. I know that people are passionate about their communities. Friendly greetings extended to neighbors, shopkeepers, service providers, and even strangers on the street prove that this community is more than a place where one works and lives. It is a place of growth and of change, a haven in which a family can take root and flourish. Over this past century, 
the citizens of Victoria have added their unique makeup to our society, contributing their ideas and experiences to Canada's evolution as a nation. I am pleased to wish all those who call this place home a very special celebration. His Excellency David Johnston, Governor General of Canada. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Next, Your Worship, I would call upon His Honor, the Honorable Stephen L. Point, Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. some people have looked back on the journey that they've been on together to see and notice the distance that they've come, to celebrate their accomplishments, to give respect to one another. And then they turn their faces forward to look ahead. When I was taught to, to skipper a canoe, my teacher said, you have to look at the mountain peaks as your guide in order to keep that canoe straight. Otherwise, it'll begin to wander to the left, to the right soon you'll lose your way. It takes strong people to paddle a canoe. It takes a strong will to keep it straight. Strong leadership. But it also requires vision. I was out to Gold River a few years ago, and the students of that school gave me again. And I'm going to give it to you at this time, Mr. Mayor. reminded me <coughs> that your body is made up of the mind and the soul. But the most important part, however, is the soul. People in small towns in this province haven't forgotten that. 
I walked into Queen Charlotte City. This old guy walks up to me and he says, you're not from here. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. I'm going to town to get an operation. I got a broken hip. He started telling me his life story. He didn't know who I was. He was making a connection. The connection that we had one with another through our hearts. I thought he was going to take me home for dinner. <laughs> when I got to Gold River, they gave me this. It reminds me of the distance that we've all come from, the four directions where all you have come from. It reminds me of the home that we live in, comes from the earth. When I got to Government House, 20 eagles flew above the house. I hope the city never loses its vision, its spirit, the direction that's guided you from the very beginning, this desire to be inclusive, this desire to recognize First Nations, the respect and the honor that you share with others who come here from all parts of the world. And my wish for you for the next 150 years is strong leadership. Leadership based in vision and spirit, kindness and honesty and hard work. I was looking at the roof of your chamber. I now know what it must feel like to be a bee inside of a bee hive. <laughs> you must work very hard here. Congratulations, and all the best to you in the coming years. saved him for last because who wants to follow <laughs> with great courage we now ask for um, the honorable Ida Chong minister minister of community sport and cultural development welcome minister good, ever good morning everyone to uh, all of our visiting guests to former mayors and councillors, to distinguished mayors from the representative capital regional area, to our chief from the Esquimalt Nation, Andy Thomas and Marianne Ishka. I'm very pleased this morning, Your Worship, and members of council, that you have invited me to be part of this very special council meeting. And I'm delighted to bring greetings from the Premier of the Province, the Honorable Christy Clark. I'm also delighted to be joined by a colleague from the Legislature, the MLA for Victoria Swan Lake, Ralph Fleming. And today, as we gather on the traditional territory of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nation to observe the 150th anniversary of the incorporation of the City of Victoria, we acknowledge the significant milestone and the history of British Columbia's capital city. Some would argue that it was not the first capital city, but all of us who live here will know and appreciate that it always is our first capital city. <laughs> Victoria residents and all British Columbians are justly proud of their provincial capital. Victoria, as we all know, is a beautiful city featuring iconic public buildings, internationally renowned attractions, and a dynamic multicultural community that accentuates arts, culture, active, healthy lifestyles. So very briefly, I just wish to add that on behalf of Premier Christy Clark, myself, and all members of the legislature, I want to congratulate you, Mr. Mayor, 
and your council for providing an outstanding program of sesquicentennial celebrations for Victoria residents and visitors alike to enjoy. The Government of British Columbia is pleased to have provided financial support to help ensure that arts and culture in particular play a very key role in Victoria's 150th anniversary festivities. No doubt, Victoria is a great Canadian city with a rich history and a fine future filled with potential for continued success. As the minister responsible for local governments, I have the great opportunity and privilege to visit many towns celebrating milestone achievements. 25 years, 50 years, 100 years, but rarely 150th. So with that, happy sesquicentennial Victoria. Thank you. Your Worship, I would like to call upon Chief Andy Thomas, Esquimalt Nation. Chief Andy Thomas. All night I've been wondering what I was going to be saying today, thinking about my grandfathers who lived just down the street where the legislative building was. Is my grandfather at that time? His name was Cisnak. He's the one that signed a treaty in Victoria here. One of the treaties, uh, what they call the Douglas Treaties today. And I wondered what it was like 150 years ago, what it is to today, what it's becoming today. And it's an honor to be standing here for me. My grandfathers must be very happy today to see me standing here bringing wishes of congratulations, happy birthday, and everything else to Victoria. Because we've been Doing a lot of work with the city for a few years now, building this relationship. And I look forward to the next 150 for for part of my what I can do for the next 150, but for the next chiefs behind me. And I see a good future because we're building these relationships not only with the cities here but with our neighbors and I look forward to that. But I really wanted to express my gratitude to be here to wish Victoria a happy birthday. I wanted to thank the, the lion dancers for the gift that they gave us, blessing everybody before they came in, the, before we came in. Thank you for, for that blessing. Thank the Reverend here for the wonderful prayer, acknowledging. Scribe out in Songhees. I want to thank Janet for the, for the, the poem today. Because it's um, days like today when we can sit down and celebrate a victory, survival, coming into the future, and 
moving into the future, planning for the next 150. And I look forward to the next 150. I thank each and every one of you for, for being here. Welcome to Sister Cities, Napier, and Mallorca. Wishing you, it's good to see you here in our homeland. I want to welcome you in our homeland. So with that, I just want to wish Victoria again a happy birthday and great set. Thank you, Chief Thomas. You honor us with your presence. Your Worship, next I would like to call upon His Worship Mayor Frank Leonard from the District of Saanich. Your Honor, Mayor and Council, special guests, dignitaries, it's a pleasure to bring congratulations from uh, Council of Saanich and the people of Saanich. Uh, I'm apt to wander sometimes and I'll tell you a story and be a bit vague if I can. About 20 years or so ago, uh, the mayor at the time invited me to meet a member of the management team here at Victoria, a new person who had just come to town. So I came down to the mayor's office and listened to sort of a presentation on how the city of Victoria was important to the region, particularly the downtown was important to the region, and how leaders from throughout the region should be interested in the success of downtown Victoria. And it was when it was finished, I, I left the meeting and wandered two blocks back to my business uh, with my family at Go Government and Herald. The point of the story is, is no matter where you live in the region, you are indeed invested in the city of Victoria, whether it's physically or emotionally. And you're important to us no matter where we live. You're a part of our lives. So some of us may have an uptown, but you'll always be our downtown. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Leonard. Your Worship, I would like to call upon His Worship, Mayor Nils Jensen from the District of Oak Bay. Chief, your worship, and members of council. It's a great honor and a, and a real pleasure uh, to bring you the warmest birthday greetings uh, from uh, Oak Bay, from council, and from all the residents. Happy 150th. Oak Bay and Victoria have a long and proud history together, marked by a close and productive relationship ever since Oak Bay was founded 106 years ago. We are your younger cousins. There are many enduring and historic connections between our communities. For instance, the great icons that now symbolize Victoria throughout the world were designed by my predecessor, the third mayor of Oak Bay, Francis Rattenberry. He designed the iconic Empress, the legislature, and uh, to name just two of the many uh, Victoria buildings that uh, he designed. And in 1962, Oak Bay welcomed your 40th mayor Richard uh, B. Wilson to launch the first Oak Bay Tea Party. And we can't forget that in 1925, the Victoria Cougars won the Stanley Cup in Oak Bay's Patrick Arena. <laughs> Your long list of accomplished mayors and councillors contain the names of many Oak Bay residents. Our histories unite us. At 150, in fact, you don't show your age. You are perhaps a, a little larger around the middle, and maybe a few wrinkles, but you're still young and vibrant and full of vigor. And compared to the other great uh, world cities, you are still a baby. London is, after all, over 2,000 years old. Copenhagen, 845, and Quebec City, a youthful 404. So at 150, you are just getting going. And these days, with everyone being so fit and active, 150 is the new 100. <laughs> <laughs> to commemorate this important year, Oak Bay's birthday presents will include a Gary Oak tree, the symbol of Oak Bay. When planted, it will be an enduring testament 
to our friendship and respect. And it will also be our wish for future happiness, for as Oak Bay's motto goes, sub cursi felicitas, under the oak, happiness. Happy birthday. Your Worship, I would like to call upon Her Worship, Mayor Barbara Desjardins from the Township of Esquimalt. Thank you. Your Honor, Minister Chong, <coughs> Chief Thomas, Mary Ann, Victoria Mayor and Council, honored guests, Your Worships. It's my great honor today to have the opportunity to say a few words. On behalf of the Township of Esquimalt, congratulations, Victoria, on your 150th birthday. That's a lot of candles. Imagine standing here 150 years ago. I suppose it would be different dress, but the people who started this great city the now capital of BC would have the same spirit and pride which you have here today. Esquimalt and Victoria have a rich history, each unique in character and fiercely independent communities. It is the respect that we have for this uniqueness in character that gives great ability in working together to ensure a strong and vibrant, vibrant region. As you may be aware, with Victoria getting 50 years under their belt in 1912, Esquimalt received its letter patent on September 1st in 1912 and is celebrating our centennial birthday, September 8th at Gorge Park. And I wish to invite all of you to our celebration. I would encourage all to take the time to read and hear about the history of Victoria if you haven't done it already. I've had the opportunity just recently with our centennial book to read the wonderful stories of Esquimalt. And there are, there are many, and so I know that Victoria will have them too. Celebrate your accomplishments to date. Relish your opportunities of today. And dare to imagine the possibilities for Victoria in the future. These are all possible because of the community of people with passion, pride, and vision. Happy birthday, Victoria. Mr. Woodland, if you do the honor of reading the special resolution for the Susquehannock Corporation of the City of Victoria. Your Worship, for Council's consideration, a special resolution to commemorate the sesquicentennial of the incorporation of the City of Victoria. Be it resolved that the members of Council of the City of Victoria, capital city of the province of British Columbia, Dominion of Canada, having been called into special session on this historic day, do hereby recognize and commemorate this, the 150th anniversary of the incorporation of the City under the Victoria Incorporation Act 1862, passed in turn by the House of Assembly and the Legislative Council, and assented to by His Excellency James Douglas, Governor of Vancouver Island and its dependencies, on the 2nd of August, 1862. We raise our hands to the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, in whose traditional territories we live and work. Aichka. We acknowledge that Victoria is built on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen people. The Songhees and Esquimalt nations are part of the Coast Salish family and are descendants of the Lekwungen family groups. The Lekwungen people hunted and gathered here for thousands of years before European exploration. The choice of Victoria for British settlement arose when the Hudson's Bay Company correctly anticipated that the Oregon Treaty would yield southern Vancouver Island to Britain when the 49th parallel of latitude was designated as the international boundary with the United States. In 1843, the Hudson's Bay Company moved its fort from the lower reaches of the Fraser River to the eastern shore of Victoria Harbor, 
thus giving this city its beginnings as Fort Victoria. In 1849, the imperial government created, by the, created the Crown Colony of Vancouver Island with Fort Victoria as the capital, commencing our city's role in the development of British Columbia. When the United Crown Colony of British Columbia was established in 1866, Victoria briefly lost its status as the seat of government to New Westminster. However, in 1868, the city of Victoria was restored as the capital, and that role has carried on through the entry of the province of British Columbia into confederation in 1871 until today. Victoria was profoundly affected by the discovery of gold in the sand of bars of the Thompson and Fraser Rivers in 1858. Miners from across the empire and the United States passed through the port of Victoria, which served as the primary entry point and outfitting center for miners headed to the Caribou. 1858 also saw the arrival of the first Chinese immigrants to Victoria, whose contributions to the history and culture of our community are celebrated in Victoria's Chinatown a national historic place. As the first port of entry in the Pacific Northwest, Victoria continued to see an influx of people, many of whom settled here and led the call for representative local government. That call was answered on August 2nd, 1862, when the Victoria Corporation Act 1862 was passed into law. From the early days of settlement as Fort Victoria, a trading post for the Hudson's Bay Company, to our modern context as one of the most livable cities, Victoria has seen many remarkable events. Many important events witnessed by the city's residents and leaders over the first 100 years were recognized during the city's centennial celebrations in 1962. As we celebrate the city of Victoria's 150th year today, we will focus on some of the key events in our city's history over the last 50 years. In the 1960s, as a legacy of the centennial celebrations, the city undertook the rehabilitation of the original city hall, the addition of a new legislative wing, and the development of Centennial Square. The importance of downtown to the region's culture and economy was embraced by civic leaders, who supported the revitalization of public spaces, such as Bastion Square and the McPherson Theater, and who facilitated the development of city parkades to improve automobile access to the downtown. A downtown paid up program initiated during this time saw a number of downtown buildings repainted in heritage color schemes. The quiet beginning of a vibrant city heritage program. The city's first official community plan was created during this time as the city initiated urban planning by creating the city's planning department. The city's archives was established in 1967 by Ainsley Helmkin descendant of one of Victoria's pioneer families, and which continues to provide a valuable resource about the history of our city. In the 1970s, the Crystal Pool on Quadra Street opened, boasting a 50-meter pool and platform diving facility. The pressure to redevelop both the historic downtown and adjacent Victoria neighborhoods compelled city leaders to protect the city's heritage buildings and lim limit the impact of new development on the community. One such historic building, the city's Crystal Garden, was transfer transferred to the province of British Columbia, who fully restored and reopened the facility as a tropical conservatory in 1980. Victoria Harbor began its deindustrialization during this area, as long-established resource industries struggled to compete in the international economy. Finally, the city formalized international civic relations with its first twin city partnership with Napier, New Zealand. In the 1980s, the city initiated planning for the development of the Songhees neighborhood to transform this area from its industrial past to an urban residential future. Activism to preserve city's built heritage led to the development of city programs to inventory, protect, and promote the restoration of heritage buildings. <coughs> Revitalization of Chinatown began in earnest with the construction of the Gate of Harmonious Interest in 1981. The desire to expand the city's international contacts grew at this time, <clears throat> with new twin city partnerships with Suzhou, China, Morioka, Japan, and Havaras, Reference. 
As the decade closed, the City of Victoria completed the Victoria Conference Centre, which attracts large groups of convention visitors from around the world and supports our local economy. In the 1990s, Victoria was thrust into the international spotlight when it successfully hosted the 1994 Commonwealth Games with our regional partners. The city worked with the province of British Columbia to seek the restoration of St. Anne's Academy and the development of key downtown sites through the Victoria Accord. The development of new, planned neighborhoods on both sides of the Selkirk Water began with the Selkirk Waterfront and Rail Yards developments, which transformed these former industrial sites into vibrant, mixed-use neighborhoods. This decade also saw the Victoria Police Department relocate from its historic location in Centennial Square to the new Victoria Police Headquarters, from where it continues to provide vital services to the community. With the arrival of the new millennium, the City of Victoria undertook many initiatives in support of a greener, healthier, and more sustainable city. The city provided an incentive for a sustainable urban development through the sale of its dockside lands in Victoria West to the Dockside Green Development which employs innovative design and green building principles from the ground up. This decade also saw many new civic facilities built, including the Save on Foods Memorial Arena, the Burnside Board Community Center, Fire Station Number 2, the Spirit Square in Centennial Square, and the Victoria Conference Center's Crystal Garden. The decade saw Victoria host many international sporting events, including the World Curling Championships, the FIFA World Cup Under-20 Men's Football Tournament, and the 2010 Olympic Winter Games Torch Relay. Important civic anniversaries were also celebrated in 2008, including the 150th anniversary of Chinese immigration to Canada and the establishment of Victoria's Chinatown, and the 150th anniversaries of both the Victoria Fire Department and the Victoria Police Department. The current decade in which we celebrate our 150th year holds both promise and challenge. As the decade began, the Sydney wi city witnessed the reopening of the fully restored Hudson's Bay Company building, a prominent historic landmark built by the company that founded the Fort Victoria. In the past few days, this council adopted the city's new official community plan, which provides a long-term vision for the future of our community. With a new plan in hand, civic leaders will strive to implement the vision for community sustainability, local economic development, and long-term infrastructure management to ensure that Victorians continue to enjoy a high quality of life and a sustainable future. Victoria is a unique city, a city of active and engaged residents and entrepreneurial businesses who have channeled their love of history, respect for heritage, appreciation for cultural diversity, passion for the arts and sport, and respect for the natural environment into an unparalleled place to live. Today, we celebrate our proud history and our bright future. Be it further resolved that the members of Victoria City Council express their appreciation of the values, valued service rendered during the last 150 years by the many elected city officials and staff residents and businesses that have contributed to the welfare and progress of this remarkable and beautiful city of Victoria, the capital city of the province of British Columbia. Thank you. Council, if I could please have a mover and a second. Special resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be greatly honored to uh, move the resolution. I'll second it. Council, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next, Your Worship, we have a motion to recognize and appreciate the 150 Spirit Committee. So moved. Second. Council, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Before we conclude this special meeting, it is my honor to take this opportunity to acknowledge and express our thanks to the members of the Greater Victoria Spirit Committee Society. I had to smile because after doing the uh, 2010 torch relay, we had the spirit committee. And I remember the members uh, came forward, uh, asked Mayor Alan Lowe, um, 
And the members of the committee said, well, we think our job is done, they said. And I said, well, I think there's one more job that you may wish to undertake. And that was uh, organizing uh, for the 150th celebration for the city of Victoria. Committee members have volunteered untold hours towards the planning of our 150th celebration, particularly in implementing the arts and culture and community grants. And these grants have sparked close to 60 different projects that honor and celebrate our city in a wide range of ways. Everything from community celebrations, gatherings, sporting events, to original creations of visual art, film publications, live theater, dance, and even to come opera. All of which enliven and engage our community in creative and meaningful ways. Their time, their energy and commitment have made all the difference, and that dedication deserves the recognition that we've given today. So, to our superb committee chairs, Alan Lowe and Mr. Hugh McDonald, all the volunteer members of the committee, on behalf of the Victoria City Council staff and the entire community, thank you for helping to put the candles on the cake. Yes, Your Worship, we have received well wishes from two of our sister cities. First, from Rauchi Taguchi, President, Morioka Victoria Friendship Society. Dear Mayor Fortin, on behalf of Morioka Victoria Friendship Society, I'm pleased to congratulate our sister city of Victoria's 150th anniversary. <laughs> I am honored and delighted by the official invitation from the city of Victoria on its sesquicentennial celebrations on August 2nd. I would like to congratulate you in person. However, unfortunately, due to continuing support activities for reconstruction of Iwati from the great disaster, I and Ioko are unable to visit Victoria to join, join those various attractive ceremonial events. I sincerely hope the success of the celebrations and close this letter now by wishing you and the citizens of Victoria good health and prosperity. The second piece of correspondence. Your Worship from Zhao Nai, Nai Zheng, <coughs> Mayor of Suzhou, dear Mora Fortin. On the occasion when Victoria <coughs> is witnessing the sesquicentennial celebrations this year, on behalf of Suzhou Municipal Government, I'd like to express my sincere greetings to you and the whole Victorian citizens. Since both cities signed the Sister City Agreement on October 20th, 1980, Victoria and Suzhou have achieved great prosperity on cooperation and great success in the promotion of mutual understanding, which all rely on the mutual trust, cooperation, <coughs> and common efforts of us during so many years. University World College, Pearson College, has successfully selected its excellent students from Suzhou Senior High Schools for training and further study in the past decade, which has influential meaning in the promotion of education cooperation. Particularly when you visited Suzhou two years ago, you had further pushed the potential cooperation projects into practice. I'm willing to push the common development between our two cities in economic and trade, scientific and educational, environment protection, cultural tourism aspects. It's a pity that I could not participate in the grand event this year due to my engagement as a new mayor. However, please accept my cordial congratulations to your brilliant long history and subsequent celebrations. I wish you good health and all the best. Thank you, Mr. Woodland. As we now come to the conclusion of this special ceremony, I'd just like to invite everyone, all of our guests here today, all of our special guests, to join us in the ceremony in Spirit Square, which will begin at 11 o'clock. Um, with that, I would ask uh, and call for a motion to adjourn. Your Worship, I'd like to move to adjourn the special council meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Mr. Whittle? Your Worship, following the adjournment of this meeting, guests are requested to remain seated while the mayor leads the council and visiting officials from the council chamber. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.